Hey everyone, in this episode we're going to be doing the radiant heat for the mechanical room, so let's get to work. I hope you remember in the previous episode we installed the floor system, the radiant heat PEX circuit underneath this tile. And uh, here you can actually see some of the uh, antifreeze water. Our radiant heat needs to connect to this because this circuit is already laid out. But before I move out of here, I want to show you real quick. Uh, remember we chose to use tile and one of the reasons we chose to use tile is because it has a much greater thermal mass than wood or any other kind of substrate. The another big bonus of tile is that it's fire uh, resistant or even fireproof, so you will actually see us install tile everywhere in the house. Why don't we begin with the very basic things? And the very basic things are I have never ever installed a radiant heat system, but I looked at Amazon, they, they sell this complete system for about $2,500. The components themselves are not that expensive. I hope to do all this entire project for about a thousand. I assume that the picture, I looked at all the different equipment that they were using throughout their, sy their system. And basically I purchased it, everything that they chose. I purchased it here. And my goal is to basically build it the same way. One very interesting thing that I noted and I've been noticing from a lot of radiant heat systems is that they use copper when they connect the heater and all that stuff. But once they move on, to the circuit under the floor is actually PEX. And I found that very interesting. I'm going to be doing the system with PEX as well. So if you, know, if you know the reason why they chose to use copper instead of PEX, please comment down below. I would love to know that answer. The reason I don't want to use copper is because, you know, copper is really expensive. I think we can do it with PEX. And talking about the radiant heat system, typically radiant heat systems operate in the 85 degrees Fahrenheit to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's not even close to the limits of PEX. That's the typical hot water temperatures going around the house. By the way, we're using an electric heater. Anyway, let's get to work. So I have laid out all the components for the radiant heat system. I do want to show you some of the components that I had to purchase because obviously once it's assembled, we cannot remove them. First, I have this uh, thermometer. Let me show you actually this one. What I have here is the PEX to PEX and the name of this thing is eardrop and eardrop valve, I guess. And then you put this guy in here. When you purchase your thermometer, it comes like this with that little thing. You put it in there, in here. And it has this little screw to keep it in, in place. With a little bit of Teflon tape, you screw it onto the ball valve and then you have your thermometer now taking temperature from the line. We have some generic, let's say, expansion tape components. This is a T, this is a 90. Nothing special about them, they're easy to find. Talk about our aerator. This removes air. One thing I did find that was interesting, well first, because we're using PEX, we are having to buy all these converters from 3 quarter inch brass to expansion PEX. Very important that you look for expansion PEX and not get the PEX B type, that's very important. Don't make that mistake. We have this three quarter here. But what's in interesting about this guy is that the bottom one is actually a half an inch brass connection. So that meant I had to purchase this half an inch to three quarter to be able to connect to our expansion tank. Here's the uh, expansion tank. Nothing super fancy about it. And I'm going to connect those two directly. We use a bunch of different ball valves like these ones. The nice thing about this ball valve is that you can actually connect a garden hose in here and that's how we're going to be filling up the system. And then on the other side is just PEX A. I have not purchased my uh, pressure reducing valve here. I'm, I forgot to purchase it, but here's an example of one. This is from the water heater. This uh, has a pressure spring. If the pressure increases, it pushes the spring and then water can come out to the drain. We have our circulator. This guy, wine winter. Hopefully you can see it right there on the video. Type C O F C S. The whole goal of this guy is to rotate the water through the system. Because the, the entire system is three quarter inch. We have a three quarter inch to half an inch PEX converter because our circuit under the floor for PEX is half an inch, while this operation is at three quarter inch. The name of this guy is a Y strainer. And the reason I like it so much is because it's transparent. So as we fill up the system, I'm going to be able to see the flow of the water uh, without having to interrupt the system. So I can see if it has bubbles or, or not. And then if, if it stops having bubbles, then that, that means I can stop the circulation, shut the system up and then have it closed. I have not exactly figured out how I'm going to connect this to the uh, PEX. That's currently what I have. I'll do some assembling and then hopefully I'll be able to show you now how the system starts to work together. So 
So as you can see, I have all of my plumbing taken care of. But before we move on, let me show you how we do the actual connections and everything for PEX Type A. Once you cut it to size, you have this little deburr that basically creates a, needle, a nice little chamfer here at the edge. Then you insert this thing that's called a sleeve. It'll be impossible to see in camera, but it has a little lip on one side and not on the other. The lip is basically a stop for the pipe. Once you insert it, it cannot go any further. Then you insert this onto your DeWalt tool. Well, it doesn't have to be DeWalt, but a tool like this. It is expanding the pipe so that you can insert your coupling like this. The cool thing about PEXA is that it comes back to size and then you have your proper connection. So that's how I did all of my connections here in the system. I'm going to be super brief here because it'll be easier to explain everything once it's standing up. Here is my two inlet and outlet for the uh, water tank. I get my hot water in, we remove the bubbles, we have a pressure relief valve, we go out. This is typically closed most of the time because it's where I insert water. I have a pressure valve here to be able to see what's going on. Circulator, we go into the circuit under the floor, then we come back and then we have our strainer to see if there are any bubbles. This will tell me when to stop filtering the system, I guess. And then we come back down and then this is the return for the water tank. We have hooked up all the electrical for the plumbing of the uh, radiant heat. I'm going to show you the components and then we'll go to the computer and I'll actually show you the electrical diagram of wire to wire, how they connect. We have here the controller. This is basically your thermostat. This is where the sensor is going from the floor. It actually only has one sensor, but we have two because we have a spare one just in case one fails. And this guy is what decides when to call for heat. This cable comes all the way around here and it comes out of this little box. We decided to give it its own little circuit. It's a 20 amp circuit. Exclusive exclusive 20 amp circuit for this uh, tank because it consumes a lot of power. This can run on a 15 amp circuit, but because it just consumes so much, that's why we decided to give it its own power. I've been reading everywhere that this tank might not be sufficient to heat this area. I guess we'll just find out. If we need to change it, I guess we'll just change it eventually. The thermostat calls for heat. It comes in through this little box. This little box is just a voltage converter. It's just a relay of sorts so that that voltage doesn't damage the TACO controller. It it's a single zone and then this takes care of turning on the circulating pump when it calls for heat so that effectively circulates the heat everywhere. Uh, with respect to the tank, the tank is set at a temperature so the temperature within the tank if it drops below that threshold it'll come on regardless of what's happening with the pump. The tank is basically trying to heat up the water in here and then it just circulates. Let's go to the computer and I'll show you how everything is connected. These are the exact same electronics that we are using. We are using the SunTouch SunStat Connect Plus thermostat. And that is what's controlling the TACO controller that similarly is controlling the pump circulator. The SunTouch cannot control the TACO controller directly because it is outputting 120 volts AC while the TACO controller simply needs a switch open or closed. So in order to accomplish that goal, we are going through the RIBU1C relay that basically opens and closes connections. Now let's Let's talk about the actual pinouts for the different systems. For the SunTouch thermostat, it has line one, that's where you apply the hotline, the 120 volt. Then you have the line two, that's where you apply the neutral. I have it gray here because, I mean, we have a, ba a white background. Now we have ground at the very bottom, and then we have two sensor inputs. It doesn't mean that there's two different sensors, it's just the two leads for one single sensor. As I mentioned, we have a secondary sensor that we could use in case it were to break. To control the DECO control, we're using the load one and the load two outputs. From here, we are sending them to the relay. That's the white black cable and then the white yellow cable. The uh, white blue, we are leaving it open. As it's a relay, relays are magnetic switches that effectively run a current, create a magnetic field and uh, close or open a switch. On the output, we have a yellow. That's a common 
And then we have the orange, that means normally open. We have the blue that is normally closed. We are not using the blue. We are sending the yellow to the thermostat call input, the RTT or the TR. And then we are sending the orange that is normally open to the TW thermostat WTT. The TECO controller takes care of automatically turning on and off the pump. The pump is simply on or off via 120 volt AC. So as you can see, it has the black hot for 120, white neutral, green ground. So these are the uh, interconnections that we have on our radiant heat system. So we are almost done with all the connections, but we still have a couple of things to do. First off, we need to connect these pipes that are the ones that have the radiant circuit on the floor. You can see a video, we have one for the full installation. So they are going to come here and here. And then we need to plug in the water heater. And then the final step we need to do is take care of the relief valve. So that's a pretty important step. So we have our expansion tank. This is the main uh, protection we have against any changes in pressure. Think of it like a balloon. If there's any pressure problem, it's going to compress the air that it has at the bottom because you can compress the air but you cannot compress the water. So this is our main area of defense. But if it is ever fails, we have another two points. So one is up here, this is another relief valve, and we'll have the relief valve down in uh, the water heater. And we're going to connect them into a single circuit that will come into a container that we'll have down here. We could have run a line into the floor drain, but honestly, it's a closed system loop, so we don't expect to have many issues and the drain is right there, so it's easier to just empty. So let's get this going and then we can start testing the system. It's working. We had to jump through a few little hoops with a few leaks here and there, but now it is uh, looking nice. All the leaks were on the brass fittings. So we have one up here, one on the thermometer and one on the tank. So the way Marcella likes to do this, and she's the plumber, by the way, we had a leak here. We tightened it. Then she likes to dry it very well. And then she puts a little napkin and then we wait. And then if this napkin is still getting wet, that means we still have a leak. So then we just tighten it a little bit more and then we just repeat the process until we don't have to do it again. The way the system works is we have a little pump that we purchased. It's just a Chinese pump and uh, that's a submersible pump. As you can see, I put a garden hose that's going into the system. The garden hose goes where the circulating, where the water goes into the circuit under the floor first. As you can see, we have the circulating pump right here and then we have the transition here between the three quarter to the half. So that means this is where the water is going into the circuit. We just wait a little bit and then it's coming out right here. That's why we have it blue because it represents that it's coming out cold. This little thing is super awesome because this is where we can see if we have any bubbles going through the system. We did have a few bubbles, so we just wait, we just circulate. And then once the bubbles are gone, then you'll see it nice like this. You see it a little bit pink because we have the antifreeze going on. Then from here, we go into the water tank and then filling this water tank took a little bit of time. We have a five gallon bucket right here. This is a seven gallon tank. We had to feel it a little bit longer we had to wait once all the water goes through we come out through the water through the hot on the on the tank then we come all this way up right here and then here we have the uh, the the thingy that gets rid of the bubbles and then it comes back through here onto the bucket and so here basically we use this pump to circulate once the system is up and running full of water then we turn on we turn on the thermostat so that the system comes on and it calls on water meaning that our little circulating pump works and we just wait we just let it rotate over and over once we don't see any bubbles right here we shut our system up and then we open this uh, valve right here so that it can just go around and around on a loop. We have turned on the, the water heater and we're just waiting on it to, to heat up. Hopefully it will work. 
we've been running the system for a little bit of time and it's been working fine so far but uh, when I went home at night I was doing some reading about this circulator and I, I can actually increase the circulator speed to the third level as long as we're within the 50 psi maximum. When I came this morning I did and as soon as I increased the pressure this crazy leak came back it's super annoying we really only have two options we can cut it open and uh, try to assemble it again uh, hopefully fix this leak or go back to memory lane and use this guy the rescue tape that saved us when we were doing the underslab plumbing and uh, I hope it can save us this time again because we're going to be using this rescue tape it's like this rubber kind of thingy like a rubber band that you just tie all around it very tightly and it just literally blocks the leak it's so minuscule it's like a little drop like every two or three seconds or whatever more seconds maybe 10 seconds I don't know we're hoping this will work so let's do it The rescue tape definitely saved us with this expansion tank and we said oh yes we made it so we started hooking up the system and then actually since last night i started to notice the circulator was making a lot of noise and it was getting extraordinarily hot another thing i noticed is that the heater the water heater was shutting off and uh, we were not reaching temperature so I didn't think too much of it. We were about to close the episode and I was going to show you here the thermal camera on the floor. Then I noticed that the floor was not warm or it was not heated. At that point in time, I realized there's no circulation on the system. Even though we have this circulator, once all the bubbles go away, it do you cannot tell if it's flowing or not flowing. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> So what that meant is we had to remove this and then we had to add water to the system because my theory is that with all the water that we lost through the leaks and whatever, we ended up with a bubble here at the top of the heater and so there was no circulation. So by adding the water through the system, that air pushed out and then we were able to flow through. And now we could see everything nice and warm on the floor and we said, okay, we're done, we made it. But oh surprise, once we added pressure to the system because the system needs to have at least some 10 PSI of pressure, we started to get the leak back again on this uh, little transparent thing where we see the bubbles. And uh, we said, okay, why don't we use the rescue tape again? <laughs> but the problem with this thing is that this has this little lip so as the rescue tape goes through it forms like a little triangle where the water was coming out and eventually it was on sticking our rescue tape we had no choice but to cut it off like you see right here and put a, a straight up uh, pex line do we need this guy we don't think we need it anymore because the thing that we learned is that the uh, circulator when there's air in the system it makes noise like brrr, uh, it also gets hot so that's how we know that there's air on the system and we actually have some white transparency lines right here and we can see the flow through there as well so that's a tip if you don't have a, a thermal camera and you see that your tank is shutting off but the circulator is still going, you might not have flow on the system and then you might have a big bubble of air somewhere. And then again, the tip for finding bubbles is to listen to your circulator, touch it. It, sh it, it can get warm but not super hot like it was when it was trying to push and there was no flow through it. It is working now. We have left this connected because we're adding water to the system as we let it out. So as this air gets out, we add a little bit of water we turn on the pump we connect it the pressure rises so hopefully it'll rise again to 10 psi and we let the system run and then so on and so forth but we're going to be repeating this process i believe for the next week or maybe yeah maybe probably like a week so that we can have a nice uh, fully pressurized that 10 psi and that should be pretty good overall so with that we're done with this episode i hope you like please comment down below let us know what you think if we made a mistake or if you like something it'll help us significantly i'm gonna let you uh, on the close-up to see the floor with the uh, with the thermal camera it looks pretty awesome so see you in the next one bye